ready? It's the round table with me, Robert Bannon. Holy moly, you're here. There are people here and it is a eight o'clock Thursday and we never meant to be on at eight o'clock, but we're here at eight o'clock. Hi, everybody. So listen to what happened. I was at the uh, opening of Water for Elephants at the Imperial Theater, freezing cold. I'm still freezing, freezing cold, been out there doing work. And we go to the parking garage and they can't find my car. So the man takes my ticket. He gets called because they couldn't find another car. So now they're arguing about the car. He loses my ticket. Can't find it. 45 minutes later, we're up and down the elevator. I'm in the elevator with the man in the parking garage through the six floors. When my car comes down, it was like Abaddon Costello. My car comes down and I'm going up. So it took, we were very late. I'm very late. I'm an hour late. But instead of a seven o'clock show, it's an eight o'clock show. And it seems like in the air today, people are a little. So let's just find some joy and some levity and some levity together. Because Lainey Kazan is here. Hi, Sergio. I don't have the drawing that you drew me. It's on my desk at work and I wasn't there today. And hello to Josue. And I'm home. This is my house. So hi. And happy birthday to Sergio. Everyone sing with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, my dear students. Sergio. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you. Well, welcome everyone to the round table. Should we get started? Here's my weekend review. Well, to start things off for everyone here together, we uh, we went to the opening of the notebook. That information's out. That's Nicholas Sparks who wrote the notebook. Um, we love that. That was a fun moment for sure. And we got to chat with Nicholas Sparks, and that was great. And we had a good old time. It was St. Patrick's Day. I hope you celebrated. My neighbors put out a dinosaur and a leprechaun and a bucket of gold, and I love it. Love it. I went and got my nails done. Yes. Come on, nails. We had a nail moment. And I went and checked out Water for Elephants with my friend Mike. We went and saw the show. We did. We did. There's the playbill. There's, there's some Water for Elephants moments. And I went to the dress rehearsal for Lampika. And y'all, this show, this show, this show is something so incredibly special. And I have a big announcement for you about Lampika that I'm going to play for you now when we do our shameless plug. You ready, Freddy? I'm ready. Here's the shameless plug. Because I'm shameless. So what ended up happening is we did uh, we we did a very special interview with the people from Lumpika. It's coming to Broadway World. That's right. The round table comes to Broadway World. We are joining the ranks here, and we're doing a brand new show. And our opening first one that comes out tomorrow, 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 tomorrow is Lumpika exclusive with Eden Espinosa, Amber Iman, and Tony winner Beth Level with writer Matt Gould all together for a special edition of the round table on Broadway world. If you follow my social media, you can follow me at Robert M. Bannon, wherever you listen or watch, or you can go to robertbannon.com and find out where you can find it. We will be live. It's our first one. And next week I, yes, mama Rose is ready. Hi mom. Thank you. And next week you can catch Dorian Harewood who is starring in The Notebook, will be with us for a special 30-minute chat. It's really special and fun to be able to partner with Broadway World and bring this information and this work out into the world. And I'm so grateful and excited to be the one that's able to do it. So thank you so much to everyone for being here. Hi, Christine. Thank you for dealing with us before. We were nutty. What a nutty, 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 nutty time. We were in the parking garage for an hour lost in the parking garage in New York City. So it was a stinky, stinky moment. Hi, Jose from my seventh grade class. How are you, buddy? So we have, uh, we are really excited about it. And then, of course, as you know, as always, you can listen to our shows on the Broadway Podcast Network. They're continuing every single day. And, um, and do we have other things going on? What else is going on? Oh, my show. My show comes to 54 Below June 14th at 930 with Mauricio Martinez. If you want to get your tickets, you just go to robertbannon.com or 54below.org. I don't know the 7 o'clock show yet. 
but I'm excited about the seven o'clock show because I always love to know who's on before me because that means I'm backstage. I can like see them and I could fan out and kiki it out. And Liz and Anne Hathaway, uh, Anne Hathaway. Yeah, Anne Hathaway. Callaway did the show one year. And last time it was Clint Holmes did the show before me. And Emily Skinner's done the seven o'clock show before me. So I'm excited. Who's it going to be this year? Maybe no one. Maybe it's just me back there, bored and lonely. Uh, who knows what's going on, but I'm excited about it. Really, really excited for it, for sure. We have a long, long chat with Lainey Kazan. We chatted for 45 minutes, so I want to give that information to you. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my Aunt Fran. Shout out to my grandmother. Shout out to everyone who's watching because Lainey is talked about in this because Lainey is like my big Greek wedding, and, and I feel like I live, hi, Aunt Fran, I live my big Greek wedding, and me getting married next year makes me feel like I'm living it even more. Imagine it to a guy, a black dude from Detroit, marrying into this crazy family. You know what I'm saying? Lattes, you're excited about something. What did we do? So we did something. Hi, David. Hi, friend. So yeah, we have all of that excitement. So tomorrow, Broadway World, Eden, Amber, Beth, and Matt will be on. I'll post all the links everywhere. And uh, we have Lainey Kazan, who is so great as the mom, but she started out in Brooklyn and she was Barbara Streisand's understudy in Funny. And she's going to tell you a shady story about Barbara. Read between the lines. Wait till you see how nutty I was in the cold of Water for Elephants. When I tell you it was cold out there, And I love how the people who certain people don't stop. But some people are our friends. Jackel Spivey from Mean Girls was there. Jessica Vosk was there. Mika Abraham and and uh, and and um and Alex Grayson was there. They've done this show. So we saw a lot of friends of the round table there. And I loved it. There's a lot of people in that show. So wait till you see um what I have in hands. Yes, I, my concert is in New York City. It's coming up in June. And good for you. Go, go Yankees with a Y. So, there, go ahead, Clarence. This dog is the devil. Come here, devil. So, I'm going to eat dinner while you all watch Lainey Kazan. It's a special, special chat. Of all my chats, and I've done hundreds, you know, we're up to 98. Wait, well, 98 on this show. And a hundred and something on the other shows, like 300 shows, etc. Wait till you see this chat. This is a good one. Yes. 54 below, June 14th, 930. And I, Christine, I marked down John McDaniels and Emily Skinner, who has done my other show, Emily Skinner. We no, not Emily Skinner, Alice Ripley, which is very fascinating. And I've done the show with Alice Ripley. She was mad at me, Alice Ripley. When we did this, when she did the, the, the sideshow reunion, she was mad at me because we used the wrong artwork. She's a tough cookie, but it sings her face off. So uh, let's get a start. Lenny Kazan is here. And um, how do my students are asking me, how do I sing at these different events? I've been in this game for 30 years plus. So it's just been a lifetime of working. And if you work hard, Sergio, and you keep doing what you do, you can be able to do anything that you want to be as well. Do we have a Hey Friend Hey? I'm just going to play it for fun because I know you all like it. Christine has a dance and everything to it. So go ahead. I'll be there for you. How you do it? I think our Hey Friend Hey today goes out to everyone who was listening and watching our live on Instagram at 630 when we were stuck in. In the parking garage. I hope that entertained you and gave you joy. Alice Ripley and John McDaniels, both friends to the show. So that's going to be very fascinating. And yes, Lattes, Lampika and Broadway World. They literally had a rehearsal, an event. They had a photo shoot. And then they gave me 30 minutes during their dinner break in a dressing room at the Long Acre. You will see Eden you will see Amber and you will see Beth and you will see Matt and you will see me on Broadway World, all of Broadway World, an exclusive Matt Gould and his muses. This is not airing anywhere but Broadway World. And I was really excited to get that. It's very, very exciting for sure. So 
everyone stay tuned i hope i can't wait for you all to see limpika i loved it i can't wait to be there again lady kazan is here mom grandma and fran this one's for you let's do it well it's a real honor we've been celebrating women it's women's history month and there is somebody who reminds me so much i don't care if you're greek if you're Italian, like my family, if you're Jewish, no matter where you're from, our next guest has brought so much joy. It's a cake with a hole in it. It's a butt cake. It's something we say in our house all the time, from Broadway to my big Greek wedding, to all the television shows, to over 285 IMDb credits. She's a legend of stage, screen, nominations, Emmys, Tonys, the whole thing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Miss Lainey Kazan. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a fabulous intro. Thank well, you. Well, you are you are quite fabulous. <laughs> you are good. Oh, it's, thank you. Thank you. you have brought so much joy. When I look at you, I think of of my family growing up. I think of my grandmother who was in Vegas, who was in the cabaret scene, who was watching you. Who was she? Fort Lee, New Jersey, a little Italian lady growing up watching and then my mother and then bringing all of your movies and your work to me so thank you for being here my pleasure my extreme pleasure well i think about you and i, I i'm a school teacher uh, when i'm not doing fun things like this and i often think and i teach musical theater in newark new jersey and i often think of someone whose career started on stage when did you fall in love with the idea of acting and that it could be a career you know something, I just never really made a choice. I just happened to me, you know? I, I was a little girl and I was maybe four or five and I was in the Catskills with my parents and they, they put on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And this is what my fondest memory is. And it really started my path. Apparently, I, I ate the apple and I was dead, okay? All of a sudden, these all these kids forgot their lines. I got up from the dead, gave them their lines, <laughs> and laid back down again. So the audience was hysterical laughing, and, and, it, and it started me on my path, really. And then I went to a camp, Camp Shinawa, where a hundred little Jewish girls and boys uh, spent their summers. And I was fortunate enough to be one of those little girls. And I did all the plays. I had people who encouraged me. And I was just a, a, a very pliable person. You know, I, even at a young age, I, I took direction well and I understood what was going on. And I think. I, as I said, I, I never made a choice, but I, it, it chose me. Yes, that calling. It's a calling, and you answered the call, and uh, we're all the better for it. Thank you. Your, your life in high school, did you, did you do the school plays? I mean, there's a lot of that. Your high school and Brooklyn in general was a breeding ground for artists at that time. Well, it was a great place to grow up because it, there was an innocence about the living there. And it was a it was a beautiful time in Brooklyn. It was lovely, and 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 there were families just budding. You know, it was a very fertile land, and I happened to be right in the smack middle of it, and I loved it. But my high school, it, it had. I mean, Barbara Streisand went to that high school, so and Susan Haywood, but years before. But my, my real uh, connections began in college. Okay. I went to Hofstra University, and my classmates were Francis Coppola, Madeline Kahn, um, who else, who else? Um, there were just a whole wonderful group of theater majors. And I was fortunate enough to get into that. I, I got a scholarship to the school. And what happened was Francis Coppola became my my biggest, you know, what do you call it? Uh, my, I was a person who was, every play he wrote, every play he directed, I was in. 
And I got to know Francie very well. <laughs> right. And you, whatever happened to him, just a, a lifetime of movies that will live forever. Yeah, we still keep in touch. Did you have from school formal acting training? I know you're a lifelong, did you studied with some of the greatest acting teachers ever? I studied with, uh, first was um, Herbert Bergdorf, but I, 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 that was a non plus. And then I, I, I was told about the, uh, the Stanford Meisner School of Acting. And he was so influential in my life and so important in my life. He became a real mentor. And I, I went to the school for a few years. Well, actually while I was in Funny Girl and before I was in Funny Girl, he led me to my audition. He took me to my audition. And I really never looked back. And he was a, the most wonderful man, the most, one, you know, an, an inspiration he was. And he used to call me Gadge. I didn't understand what that meant. But years later, I found out that's what they called Ilya Kazan, Gadge. So he would call me, Hey, Gadge. <laughs> so, and then from there, you know, and he taught me the fundamentals of acting. I mean, you know, pre preparation and, you know, things that you use your whole life. You don't just use it sprinkled on the, on the sauce. You know, you used it. That was the fundamentals of your, 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 your case. And, um, I loved it. I loved it. I loved the improvisations. I loved the uh, connection to other actors. I was very fluid. I was very, I was a, a, a kind of a, I could really feel the characters. I, I understood how to become a character. And that's probably why I, I've, I've taken all of my little people who I've, nurtured all my characters and i've been able to you know hold on to them and and use them and uh, so and then i went and studied with lee strasberg i had him for five years i mean what, what can it get any better and you know everybody was afraid of him and they tell me these terrible stories and he loved me <laughs> I mean, it was so easy to get along with him. And so he just nurtured me. He truly nurtured me. And I did all the Anamanyani roles, you know, all the, the uh, kind of um, the rich Tennessee Williams characters. And that was what I concentrated on. And then one day I did a, a, something from a, a play that was a comedic play. And Lee Strasberg was laughing and laughing. And he said to me, Laney, that is hilarious. It's not the work. It's not the way we work, but it's really funny. So I somehow combined a natural uh, humanity and a natural humor to the, the characters that I, I brought to life. And, um, and I always, Love the funny. I love the funny stuff. It's so funny to talk about Meisner with you because I'm a graduate of William Esper, which is a Meisner conservatory. And I was ready to do repetition. They, they live, it lives with you forever. If you're a Meisner student, that toolbox, those things that you've learned. Oh, they, it's just like, go get in there and do it. And done. Brilliant, brilliant work. Brilliant, brilliant uh, stuff to choose from. You know, you just, I enjoyed myself a lot. I've, had, does, a, I've had a great time. I, and we've had a great time watching. And when you look at your career, we're so used to you. I'm so used to you from television and film, but you're a Broadway baby. I mean, you go back to your first, the happiest girl. Oh, in oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's hilarious. I was gonna tell you a story about that. <laughs> We were in Philadelphia try, doing our tryout for New York. This is my first foray onto the Broadway stage. And 
now we're ready. We, we travel and we come to New York and we're putting the show up. And, um, <laughs> and what happened is that there were all these Greek gods and goddesses in the play and they were up in the rafters of the theater. All the overture plays, blah, 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 you know, it's all Offenbach music. And all of a sudden we hear, can't get down, can't get down. They were all stuck up in the rafters. And we had to stop the, the opening night and, and revisit it. So that was my first opening on Broadway. But I did have one show that I did um which was uh leave it to jane which was on bro uh, off broadway for a long time we, we i auditioned in my sophomore year in college and i worked until i graduated i worked until i graduated in that place no yeah, and leave it to Jane, Jane, Jane. <laughs> yes. So you wait. You worked through college in an off-Broadway show while going to school during the day. Yes, I did. And I just loved it. I, I did. Nothing was too much for me. I just, I, I. It fed me. And if it did, it hadn't fed me, you know. And I took time off to, to do plays in in college too because I was working with Francis as his leading lady. <laughs> so, you must, I tell you, a drink and a, and a late night with you, you must have <laughs> <story. laughs> do that. That's what I'm in New York? I'm in New York. And we'll do that when I get to New York. That When you're in New York, drink's on me. Story's okay. on you. <laughs> How, yes, funny girl. Is a is a moment for sure in history, and did that moment? How did the transition happen from Broadway to you? Did every variety show, every television show? How did the how does a transition like that happen? Was it on purpose? I had a manager, um, and he was very he was great. Uh, he saw. He nurtured me, and as as well, many did and people did, but I was very much on his mind. He knew where to go with me. He'd done it before, so I was doing, um, you know, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas. I co-hosted the Mike Douglas show for a week. I but this is all after Funny Girl. It wasn't before, right? So before Funny Girl, I just was. A neophyte. I mean, I just didn't know when my next job was coming. And then there was Funny Girl. So I, uh, I remember I was uh, given a, a kind of an order to uh, call Ray Stark's apartment, or not. He lived in a hotel, the Sherry Netherlands, I think. And uh, and he wanted me to come up and see him after my audition for the company. And he said to me, he, he was lying in bed with his leg up in a cast because he had been skiing in some resort and uh, he just couldn't move. But he said to me, and I was nervous because, you know, guys would come on to me all the time. And I, I just didn't know, you know, I would always say, I don't want to upset them, but I want the part. But I never slept with anybody that, you know, I did not. <laughs> It wasn't my turn to do that. <laughs> so I just lived, lived my life and did my work. Um, and I was good so that therefore I didn't have to do those other things. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would have. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he said that he told me, sit down on the bed here. And I got very nervous. So he sat with me and he said, you know, we'd like to offer you the understudy to Barbara Streisand. And I said, you know, I'm not an understudy type. <laughs> I said to him, I had said, I don't know where I got my nerve. But he said, um, 
I, I, I said to him, I, I don't think that I can do something exactly like the person before me is doing it. I want to know I have creative control over my performance. And uh, he said, okay, we'll give you $50 more a week. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> hard bargain. <laughs> you drove a hard bargain. There's pictures of those days. The cast. Oh, right. Oh, my God. The cast of. Oh, of my God. Look at it all. Do you remember oh. the night you went on? The first time you took oh, on the. God. I only went on twice in one day, period. That was the end of my career in Funny Girl. Yeah. What happened is that everywhere I would go in New York, people would say, you know, if you ever go on, call me. So I had a little book and I write their name and their number and I kept it in my mind. And, um, <laughs> and uh, only if they were really important did I write them down. I mean, I met a lot of people during those, those times. And um, so the, the day comes and I get a call like early in the morning, you're going on today. It was a Wednesday. You're going on. No, it was a Tuesday night. You're going on Tuesday night, and we really need you to get down to the theater as quickly as possible. So there was Sidney Chaplin, ready to rehearse with me. He he was the most kind, most wonderful, dearest man, and very very good at what he did. So I had a great time. They put, they threw me around the stage because I didn't even. I never had rehearsed with the real people. I had only rehearsed with the understudies and I, I didn't get the script or the music, everything was late. So um, I, I, I'm ready to go on, I'm in the dressing room, Barbara's dressing room. Oh, I just, uh, I was like having a breakdown, you know, I was so excited and so nervous and just so many emotions going through my my body and, um, and so I call, oh, I called everybody on my list and they all showed up <laughs> and so did Barbara. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. And I watched her stand in the wings and just do her little good. And I went to the next door to the coffee shop or the diner and bawled my eyes out. I cried and cried because I was so, you know, ready to, to do everything. And and I had worked all day and all night, you know. So I was very unhappy. I was very unhappy. So the next day, my friends all were calling me. Did you see the newspapers? It says, show goes on, but Laney doesn't. It ain't funny, girl. Uh, it was just a nightmare for me. It was a nightmare. So I, I came to the theater kind of with my head down and didn't think anything of it. And they said to me, listen, Miss Kazan, you are going on today, this afternoon, but you cannot call a soul. And I said, can I just call my mother? And she had a duplicate list of all the people I was supposed to call. And she went and called them. <laughs> and they and I did that afternoon show to a packed audience. They they almost didn't stay. I a lot of people got up and started to leave. And then when I came time to sing my I'm the greatest star and you know do the tap dance and everything, they came back to their seats. So I was thrilled, I was thrilled. And that night, I did another show. I did, it was a Wednesday matinee, and then I went on in the evening, but they never told me I was going on again. They left, left it, it was, it was a bizarre situation. So I did go on twice in one day, and I had the best time, the best of times, the best. I, iconic, an iconic story. And a very interesting, very, yes, a lot, very interesting story, I'm sure, in time for you to be there. But that did translate into a a, a very big 
Cabaret Variety Vegas singing. Unbelievable. I mean, they sent me to, Ray Stark had sent me to my husband who became, uh, the man who became my husband uh, because they they wanted to nurture me and they wanted to, uh, you know, show me the ropes and da, 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 da. So he was very uh, equipped to do that. And um, so I did and I, I took my turn and it was time to leave the show and I gave my two week notice and I went, I never turned back. That you never did. I mean, we look at some of your history, some of the TV variety performances like you on Ed Sullivan, like oh my you, God. Those you, great. you did a lot of appearances with Dean Martin yes. on the Dean Martin show. Yes. What? 26 to be exact. What is it like to work on a set with someone like Dean Martin? He was the best. The best. I, I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. He just knew what he wanted. He kind of like liked me. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I just, I never took advantage of it. I just did it. I just did the shows. And I just made choices that were, really visceral and and good because they were visceral because I wasn't manipulating anything. I just wanted to do it and do it well. So that's what I did and I did it. And I went to Vegas. I sat I sang at the Fremont Hotel downtown. Yeah. Oh my God, help us. I didn't know what that Vegas was about. So I I remember I was I was waiting for my opportunity to, to go on, but I hated being there with the machines and the slot machines, and I hated it. And the rugs were all these colors, and I would like lose my, my heart in there. So I took an apartment way down on Paradise Road, and I, I just, um, I, I rode horses all day, and I sang all night. Oh, it, 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 amazing. Your career is uh, uh, multiple books. It is it is everyone through the eras of Hollywood that you have worked with and, and co-starred with. When I look for pictures, I mean, here's Jules Brenner and oh. here's Frank Sinatra. Oh. And, you know, literally, do you ever just flip the TV on and see a movie and say, oh my God, it looks familiar. And then it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's funny. It's a very strange feeling. But I'm not so used to it. I, you know, it doesn't really. 280 credits plus uh, of, of different television shows and movies. Um, that's I had just such a good time. I had such a good time. And then I started to not have a good time. And um, I was sick. I was, I was always hurting myself. I, I injured my leg. I injured, I mean, I did a whole bunch of stuff and it was very un, uncomfortable, unhappy. And I started to feel that I, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. And I wanted to go home. I wanted to go back. I, had my, I got married to Peter Daniels, H.B. Daniels. And he was from London. And we had a wonderful life. And, um, and I had a baby. And who's a beautiful young woman. And uh, she's 52 years old. That's beautiful. Oh, my God. It's wonderful. And I have three grandchildren. Oh. Wonderful. That must be the greatest gift is to be a mom and to be a grandma. Yeah, it's the best. But I never stopped working. I never no. Stopped working. And I did it by myself after a while. Peter passed away. He had lung cancer. And I just, I kept going. I just kept going. I, I didn't know where else to go. You know, that was my track. Right. That, that was it. So that's what I did. And I, I, I worked with some of the greatest people on earth and I was very fortunate, but I never was overwhelmed by it. You know what I mean? I just, 
I never was a fan. Right. That. I just I was just a an appreciative person, and I and I and I treated myself that way, and I treated the others that way. So I had a good time, you know. I I was, but I had to take a, a break. So. I was doing all these nightclubs. All I mean, I was at the Riviera. I was at the Sahara. They had a picture of me at the Sahara Hotel on the building, the size of the building, with that wet shirt shut. I yes. Did. Okay. Yes. And I, I, I did that, and uh, oh my God, it was unbelievable. And I would come into Vegas, and I see my picture on the wall of the hotel. I mean, on this outside. So, I mean, it was bizarre, but I was not doing well physically. I had broken my leg. Uh, I was um, doing a documentary uh, with Larry Schiller. You know who that is? It, he wrote a ve very many books. Okay. Death and Mayhem, you know. Oh, yes. And me. <laughs> Death and Mayhem and Marilyn Monroe and me. Those were his <laughs> subjects. And I happened to be in their mix. And he, he, I broke my leg running on the beach doing, during, you know, during the, um, uh, what, whatever you call it, during the, um, the documentary. Okay. So, um, and, I, and I, I said, I got to stop this. I got to stop. I've just got to stop. And I did. And um, and then I started singing at these little dot, like I called them the toilets of America. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just figured out I had I had to do that I had to stop because I was going to do something terrible to myself. So. Um, I never slept. I, you know, I just, it was a very uncomfortable couple of years. And so I went up to this little club in um, Wisconsin. And I remembered that I had sung at the Playboy Resort Hotel in, um, in, Wisconsin, in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And I, that I had the best time, the best. And I and I I decided I would call them up and see if they had a couple of rooms for me. So I called up, and the, the guy who was the bellhop became the manager of the hotel. <laughs> and I said to him, "This is Lainey Kazan. I don't know if you remember me. I mean, I I I started to lose who I was." And so he he said, "Of course I remember you. Come on up. Bring your musicians. Bring your child. Bring you this. Bring you that." It will make you so comfortable, you'll be so happy. I did that. And I went up there and I started speaking to the entertainment director. And because the the um, the, the uh, audience up there was bizarre. And the, and the people who were working the, in the room that I had played in, it was an elegant, elegant room. <laughs> So I said to them, who are the shaggy gorillas minus one buffalo fish? A rock group. I said, that is pathetic. <laughs> said, oh my God, you should have great entertainment in here. Jazz, jazz. And, and let's do something. <laughs> Pardon me. Yep. So I so I, I I I met with him and we had dinner, and he said, "Boy, those are great ideas you have." I didn't have a lot of ideas. I had one idea, <laughs> and he said, "You would you like to go down to uh, Chicago and meet with Hefner and Victor Lowndes, who ran the uh, all the gambling casinos?" I said, yeah, "Sure." I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I went down in what they called a freedom van. It was 1976. And it was called a freedom van. And I went down in a pair of jeans and a shirt. And I, because I didn't have any clothes, anything. And I decided that I was going to present my case. So I, after, after said to me, 
I hear you have some great ideas. I said, I don't have some great ideas. I have a great idea. <laughs> and I told him what the idea was. And he said, on the spot, why don't you move to LA? We'll put you up with your family and your musicians and everything. And just, we will, we'll, we'll have you run a club in, in Los Angeles because there's a terrible unseemly group of people who are there now. So, um, we were trying to get rid of that audience, that, that group. I said, Hefner, I said, you have an, a, a, an act in there called the Shaggy Gorillas minus <laughs> Buffalo Fish. What the hell is that? <laughs> anyway, they gave me full reign. They, they, I mean, they were my partners. I, I, I just came at the right time. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just a, an extraordinarily positive experience. And they signed me, and I signed up, and I got an agent, and I got, I mean, I'm an agent. I got a lawyer, threw up the contracts, and I was on my way. In the six months, I put them in the black. And those days. I did that for four and a half years. And I loved every minute of it. I liked, I guess I liked being in control. <laughs> you know, I kind of liked being, finally being able to put my ideas together and not be ostracized for it. Okay. Because I was always very strong. And, you know, once I was on the road for years and all that, then I really knew what I was doing. You know, I was a, a pishika. <laughs> yes, I, 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 but that's but that's how you have to be in this business. Any, especially a woman, and the, and I was the first woman to do that before the comedy store. Yes, or okay. anything. So it was really um, it was my time, and then because I was so successful with it, jobs just came flooding in, and I did my first acting job in this new atmosphere um and 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 it was a it was a, unbelievable i mean i just had a great time i loved it and i did it was i played sophie tucker and i worked on that ship that's that, that's parked in the in the yes in the <laughs> ocean there and i sang some of these days <laughs> yes I, I did that, and then I stopped. Uh, nothing came my way. And then finally, I guess, I was very friendly with Norman Steinberg, who wrote my favorite year. And um, he, he just thought I was the funniest thing on earth. Because I would always speak in a Yiddish accent, and I don't look like I'm going to do that. So I'd be saying, you know, and, and, and he said, you have to read this script. I read the script in the bathtub <laughs> and I loved it. I loved it. I thought, oh my God, this is the funniest thing I've ever. The playbill. Oh, Bill right Steinberg, yeah, Soroka, my favorite year. Yeah. And that Tony. was, what, honey? Tony nomination, 1993. Yeah, and then I got a Golden Globe nomination. And then a Golden Globe. I look at you and I can very remember seeing this movie for the first time. Oh. Um, just, and and Maya Bialy, now she's a like a, a health nut. Yes. She, 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 she's a scientist. Yes, brilliant. Like, After no. After all of that career, after the Broadway, after the Tonys, after all the television, all the variety shows, Vegas, the Playboy Club, you have a gigantic film career over the past few decades. We there's generations of people who have watched your work now. It's 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 continuous. Oh, it's wonderful. I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. We have some other some of the other famous photos of people that you've worked with, like this fun moment with Adam <laughs> Sandler. That Adam was the funniest job I ever had. Adam <laughs> Sandler. Well, Adam Sandler in Don't You Don't Mess with the Zohan. Yes. Come I, on. 
I played his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is perfect casting, Miss Kazan. I'm ready. And um, then I love this movie and I love them. I, and I'm sure you had a great time working on it, but I, I love Ben and Jen and I love G Lee. Oh, that was a that oh, that's a beautiful photo. Yes, look at you guys at the premiere. Yeah, that was the first that was in Miami Beach. What happened to her? Who we never heard from? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, she came on the set, and you know they weren't together at all. They met on that set. They met on the set, and Ben Affleck is a fabulous human being. I love him. Yeah, and 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 she, I didn't get to know her very well, but I've said hello over the years. You know, sure. And she's how, amazing. Uh, amazing. They're all of it amazing. So how did the call go for my big fat Greek wedding? Did you get the offer? Did you have to audition? What what happened? Okay. I was with a, an agency that was handling, um, what's his name? Oh, I can't think of his name. The actor. Oh, 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 the guy who's big, big, Tom big Hanks. actor. Who? Tom huh? Tom Hanks. I can't understand. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Yeah, I, God help me, please. <laughs> so I, I get a call from someone in that office, and they say, we're having a reading of this play. We don't know what we're going to do with it. We don't know if we're, we're trying to see if we can make a movie out of it, but I am I'm very um, very happy with the play, and I think you will enjoy it and be very very funny, and and just be real, you know. And I said, oh great, great, I'll do that. And uh, so we all got together in Tom Hanks's office, and we had I oh and they they got they said we're going to have brunch and we're going to have lunch and it'll be fine and you'll have fun you you know nothing it, you it'll be okay make a long story short um i never heard from them again for about a year and a half never not even a boo and all of a sudden i got this call from the agency and I, they said to me um they've been making an offer at scale plus 10% I swear to God. And we're going to Toronto. We're going to have a great time. Take a gamble. Come on. So I did. The rest was history. I mean, it was so... We were a real family. We became a family. And I think that it was a very nurturing experience for all of us and we all found our little niche and um, it was really exciting to watch to see and to be involved with and i loved it i loved it and i and i didn't know what we were doing no everybody's always asked me did you ever know it was going to be successful i said i had no idea i didn't know what was going on i mean i i hoped and prayed for that but i never expected it and all of a sudden, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, a year, <laughs> it was on the charts forever. Forever. And mm -hmm. then I did the number, uh, yeah. number two and number three. Um, yeah. And uh, the three I didn't like very much. I get it. I understand. Yeah, I didn't like it. And I just was hardly in it. So maybe that's why I didn't like it. <laughs> Where am I? No, but, yeah. But Nia Vardalis and this cast, how did you find? You're not, you know, it, it, I always said. The I, only person in the whole movie that wasn't Greek. Not Greek. <laughs> I bathed myself in Greek. I ate Greek food. <laughs> I, I just did everything Greek. <laughs> I was a Greek girl. <laughs> and I just. I, I I loved it. I loved their culture. I, right. I I found that it was very very comfortable for me to get into that groove. 
I relate to the movie because my father, I'm, we're not Greek, but my mom is 100% Italian. And that's what I said. If you're Italian, if you're Jewish, if you're one of these big, loud, we love, we hate, we fight families, you see your family in this film. And now I'm getting married next May. My, my, my future husband is a six foot four, beautiful black man from Detroit. And he is walking into this Italian Jersey mess. Oh my God. <laughs> This is the sequel. I feel like I'm living my big fat Greek wedding in my oh. own life. Um, and well, my I brother, wish you all the luck in the world. My brother, who is a cop, he's a detective. I said, I'm, I'm going inside. I have an interview with Lenny Kazan. And that's who reminded me. He said, a bunt cake, a cake with a whole <laughs> these lines. These lines. A bunt, a bunt, a bag. <laughs> <laughs> we, they're iconic and we will all live for it. When, how did you balance, you you balance a family, you balance the life, you balance the career. Not always to the best interest of both parts, both sides, uh, but I did my best. I, I tried everything. I mean, I I always took my daughter with me on the road. She, she lacked schooling, but now she's a very successful um, person in the, in the drug medicine world, so. It's very exciting for her, but she sings her ass off. Yeah, I bet she does. She's got you for oh, a mom. Yeah, she she studied with me. She studied with my voice teacher. And now my granddaughter, she can sing. Oh, my God. Her name is Isabella Blue. Oh. Yeah, and she can sing. The girl can sing. Her name sounds like a star. That's yeah, a star. yeah, it's beautiful, yeah. When and then and then she, she's um, and then I have a little baby grandson, and he is, he's interracial, he's black and black and white, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so he sings like Johnny Mathis. This kid is nine years old. You wouldn't believe him. Oh. Yeah, he's wonderful. It's your the so, genes, the genes, uh, the genes trickle yeah. down. Yeah. trickle down. When you, I want to say to you, from from us here, thank you because I know that you you dedicated your life to entertaining us. You dedicated your life to lighting up our screens and our stages. It came at a cost. It took you out of your home, and you did it, and you gave us so much joy. And I hope you know that it really matters, and we really appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate those words. That you thank just you. I, I'm ready for what's, I want you to come back and sing. I'm ready for your next show. I'm ready for a cabaret. Concert. You know what? I'm going to sing on May 7th at the um, Vibrato, which is a club in Beverly Glen that yes. Rob Alpert owns. And I'm just going to do that because I haven't sung in three and a half years. And I'm a little nervous, but I think I'll be all right. Ah! <laughs> Come on, you're ready, you're warmed up and rested. Well, yeah. we can find information at lanykazan.com to keep up to date with everything that's going on. And if you're on the Instagram, you go to at Lainey underscore Kazan and she, you post and, and you'll see all the, the more movies and more TV shows and more concerts and more plays and more everything from Miss Kazan because the best is yet to come. Thank you. It's really an honor and a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for making time for us. I owe you that drink and that that lunch. Yeah, I'm ready. We'll definitely do that. Thank you for being here. Beautiful. Thank you so much for visiting me. How much do you love her? Is she not amazing? She looks great. She sounds great. A, a says she looks great. She sounds great. I love her. She gave us a really good good time look lattes thought it was is laughing she's funny yes laney had an extraordinary career fascinating stories she's a good time and she is showbiz she's lived in showbiz she was born into showbiz she is show biz folks my grandmother was watching look verge grandma verge was watching verge reminds me of laney my grandmother would even wear that outfit there you have it, everybody. I hope you all had a great day. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to bed. This was a long week, America. I ate, I ate two sandwiches today and a bag of chips and sour Skittles, which is not like me. You know I'm stressed out. 
when I eat Skittles. If I go to the 7-Eleven, I don't even care about my weight. I don't even care. I don't even care. Am I, am I show at 54 Below? If I'm wearing a caftan, we saw a man today who was wearing a full um, uh, a knit blanket. A full knit blanket. A says it was a day. See, it was a day. Till next time. So it was a day. So even if I'm wearing a full Afghan, do you care? No. So I ate sour Skittles and a soda. We need to start over. Tomorrow's a brand new. Tomorrow is a brand new day. Who knows what will be tomorrow? Broadway World. I'll see you then. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the love and support you show me. There's more good than there's bad. There's more happiness than there is sadness. There's more love than there is hate. You give me so much love and joy every single time I get to check you out. Make sure to look for Broadway World tomorrow. It's going to be big deal. Matt Gould, Eden Espinosa, Amber Iman, Beth Level, the Tony winner herself, will all be here. The best is yet to come. Thank you all for being here. And I appreciate you all. Ooh, let's go take a nap. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.